Happy sunshine on Sunday, boys and girls. August 20th, 2017, 214 p.m. Got less than 24 hours until the eclipse hits the continental United States. Well, if you've been following along with my channel, what we've got here is the DC uh, identity hearing transcript for Heather Ann Tucci, 76 page document. We're on page 62. Uh, I've already done a couple takes of reading through this and I was hoping to get all the way through to the end here, but uh, but I don't think we're going to do that just to keep this at a, at a manageable length of video. So let's dive into it here. We've got uh, Bose and Judge Debra uh, discussing the 286 page document that Bose uh, filed through the ECF and now he wants that admitted as defendant's exhibit number one and Judge Debra denied him and says, now do you have any other evidence, Mr. Bose? Well, first of all, Your Honor, I'd like to note our objection to the court's ruling. Very well. I believe it's noted, as is your continuing objection for the grounds on the grounds that you proffered this morning. And, Your Honor, we would therefore, as the court just said, that it is part of the case file in this case, and we would ask the court to take judicial notice of the filing at this time, or of this filing at this time. So this is very important. Mr. Bose... Uh, you know, he's really advocating for Heather here. He's saying, well, your honor, you yourself, Judge Debra, said that it's part of the case file because I filed it. We're just asking that you take judicial notice of this filing at this time. And that's a really important term, judicial notice. I'm going to highlight the first three lines here. That's very important. Judicial notice is a rule in the law of evidence that allows a fact to be introduced into evidence if the truth of that fact is so notorious or well known or so authoritatively attested that it cannot reasonably be doubted. Wow. It's so notorious or well-known or so authoritatively attested that it cannot be reasonably doubted. That's what judicial notice is. Parker still saying, hey, your honor, take judicial notice of this court filing because the truth of it is evident and notorious. It's, it's self-validating is what he's saying. Self-validating. This is interesting here. This is uh, the government's exhibit list. And I downloaded this from the, from the docket page. I just clicked on the docket entry just like I did for Heather Antucci Giraffe to get her warrant. And, and I get this. Look, it says certified copy of indictment and copy of warrant for Tucci Giraffe. It says self-authenticating. Every date written down in this matrix of boxes here is 8417. Wow, we've got different vertical columns here, but there's no header on any of the columns except the very last column where the lines were extended out by hand and then ID is written as a header. What do these other columns mean? What, what, what's the label for those columns? And look, in the exhibit list, two things on here are self-authenticating. One of them is the warrant. Here's Heather Antucci's warrant. This is what they said is self-authenticating. It's signed by a deputy clerk. It's not valid. It needs to be signed by a judge or a magistrate. How in the world can the warrant be self-authenticating? 
look at this. The copy of the NCIC printout for Tucci Giraffe that Special Agent still mentioned when he was on the stand. Look at the name in this box. S-A still. S-T-I-L-L. -L. Where's the damn E? This was done on the same day, 8417. Just so just so you guys have a clear picture of what's going on here, the court clerk job description. The general court clerk job or the general court clerk job description is managing all of the administrative and clerical functions related to running a court. Although that may sound simple and straightforward, there's a lot of different tasks included in that general description. Some broad topics included in a uh, excuse me, a court clerk job description are managing court records, trials, customer service, miscellaneous functions. A court clerk plays a fundamental role in the judicial system. The fact is that a courtroom would not be able to operate without a highly competent court clerk to handle its day-to-day -day operations. Managing court records is perhaps the largest component of a court clerk job description and it encompasses a variety of tasks. These can include processing legal documents, scheduling court cases, and auditing files to ensure accuracy and consistency within the court record. Accuracy? Like the Washington, D.C. court clerk didn't notice that, hey, a deputy clerk signed a warrant. That's not accurate. This isn't a valid warrant. This warrant does not self-authenticate. Neither does this one. Wow, I see an error in this box. Hey, guess what? The special agent's name is spelled differently three times on this document than it is throughout the whole rest of the trial. Where is the attention to detail? From either the court, the deputy clerk that signed this warrant from Knoxville, or the deputy clerk that's in Washington, D.C., that missed all these errors. That's their job to find those. This is a comedy of cascading errors. There is no way that this happens in an honest court that is upholding the highest and best purposes for all the involved parties, period. So the court does not believe there is a ground upon which judicial notice can be taken. It is a matter that was filed that is largely because you did file it on ECF as you were permitted to do as counsel. I believe we all recognize that the mere fact that a document is filed does not render it as a matter to which the court could take judicial notice. You know, I'm starting to get the same kind of feeling listening to Deborah here that I got when I was listening to Parker Still Steel on the stand. She's, she's kind of obfuscating here, and I'm going to show you why. All of this speech here from Judge Deborah is just to say, oh, the court, this means her, Deborah, Oh, I don't believe that there is ground upon which judicial notice can be taken. Well, guess what? Judicial notice is about something being so notorious or well-known 
or so authoritatively attested that it cannot reasonably be doubted. He's saying, hey, I see reality and I see that you don't. I have eyes and can see and the judge cannot see. And she's saying that, oh, there's only certain grounds upon which the truth that is so notorious and self-evident and self-validating, that there's only, there's only certain grounds which those can be taken and, and I don't believe. Here's this word again, coming from the damn judge. Believe. There's no belief anywhere in this courtroom. It is a matter that was filed that is largely because you did file it on ECF as you were permitted to do so. So here she's saying, I don't believe that there's grounds upon which a self-validating, self-evident uh, item can be taken. It's a matter that was filed largely because you filed it and you filed it in the electronic court filing systems and you were permitted to do so because you're counsel. None of this here goes to explaining at all why judicial notice can't be taken. Here, oh, look at this. We got another word, believe. I believe we all recognize that the mere fact that a document is filed does not render it as a matter to which the court could take judicial notice. Judge Deborah knows better than this. She's believing again, and then she's attaching a statement, a blanket statement. We all recognize. How does she know that? There was no dialogue about judicial notice at all. So instead of saying, I know we all recognize the mere fact because of the conversation that we had a little while ago, and we're all on the same page as to what the standard of law is regarding this decision. Based on that conversation, I believe we're all in the same space. No, that didn't happen. She's just saying, I believe, which negates the whole damn sentence. And then she's saying something that she can't possibly know. Does Heather Ann Tucci recognize that? Does everybody else in the courtroom recognize that? How can she make this statement? She's saying, because you're permitted to file things on ECF because you're a counsel, I believe we all recognize that just that mere fact does not make it uh, grounds that the court could take judicial notice. It doesn't say should, shall, it says could. Could is about ability. She believes, she does a blanket statement, and then she uses this word could. This entire from page 62, line 20, to page 63, line 1, is pretty much gobbledygook garbage coming out of Deborah's mouth. I understand what she's trying to say, but she is dodging the larger issue here. It is apparent that her main goal for this case was to make sure that the ideas and the legal, logical justification for Heather's position never makes it in front of the eyes and ears of this court. That is blatantly apparent. Y Your Honor, I will also note that even if the court's ruling regarding the omission were otherwise, the court's finding would likely be the same, and that is that the exhibits are not relevant to the issue that I must determine this afternoon. You know, she says likely. She's noting that, hey, even if they, uh, they were admissible, I, I would find them irrelevant. Your Honor, we just, to put it another way, whether the court has admitted them or not, the evaluation would still be the same. Whoa! She hasn't even fucking looked at them, guys! She says that she did, but obviously she has not inspected. Inspect. Spect is the root of that word. That's spectacle. It's like, look, watch. Inspect is to look into. 
If she still doesn't get it upon inspection, she needs to look again. She needs to respect. That's her due diligence as a judge, especially when an officer of the court is so tenaciously trying to put this matter in front of her consciousness, in front of her awareness. And she keeps turning her head 180 degrees from where Mr. Bose puts this information. I see that. That is blatantly clear to me. We would just ask the court to note our objection. We have no additional evidence that we intend to offer at this time. We believe it's the government's burden to prove identity, and so we'll wait to hear their argument and intend to respond. Very well. Thank you very much, Mr. Bowes. Are you ready to proceed with your argument, Ms. Walters? Yes, Your Honor. Very well. We'll hear your argument. So first, Your Honor, the government would ask that the court take notice like, she's asking the court to take notice, basic, I want, I bet, judicial notice. What other kind of notice can a court take? I wonder. Are there any other kinds of notices, people? Are you a law student? Are you working in a as a judge, a lawyer? Uh, are, you, are you in an academy getting ready to be a cop or some other law enforcement officer? If you fit any of those bills... This whole series of videos you need to forward to all of your classmates. You need to forward this video to anybody who's about to go into an academy. We are uncovering here proof that the entire system is flawed and criminal and is set up to bring false charges and false prosecution against People that we don't know if they even committed the crime. If there was even a crime committed by the letter of the law, we don't know if all the elements are met. Because all of this transcript, the testimony therein is gobbledygook. It's all relying on Parker still steal. We poked holes in that. It's relying on a warrant that claims to be self-validating that I've ripped it apart and shown it's bogus. And we've got a defense attorney that's desperately trying to wake up the fucking judge who's comatose and get her to just put one eyeball on these ideas that appear to be very sound and logically supported. Malfeasance is the only thing that I know that explains the series of events that we're uncovering in this identity hearing. The government would ask the court to take notice that at the initial appearance, in fact, throughout other appearances by the defendant, she has also always responded and noted that her name is, in fact, Heather Antucci Giraffe, which the government would note is a fairly distinct name. It is a fairly distinct name. What about the second Heather Antucci, <laughs> without the giraffe, that that I found that popped up in search results. She's apparently 10 years younger than this Heather Antucci. She's known to the system because apparently uh, she's been convicted of vehicular homicide. So she's, she's noting that this is a, a distinct name, but yet doesn't talk about, hey, well, you know what? There is another Heather Antucci. Everything up to this hyphenated last name was the same. Wow, that needs to be brought in because she's relying on this fact as an argument and, and it's, already, it's already material to this case. That there was another Heather Ann Tucci. That, that's a fact. That would be self-evident if they did their due diligence. And that would just bolster Agent Steele's testimony to say, you know what? We found a couple Heather Antucci's. I thought it was a distinct name too, but apparently not. We had some extra work to do. Here's what we did. Wow, he'd look like a superstar. He didn't do that. 
Special Agent Still is a defense attorney, a prosecuting attorney. He went to JAG. He's an FBI agent, and he was been a judge. He's an expert on identity theft, giving talks at the monthly meeting to the Association of Certified Fraud Examiners in Knoxville. Why does he feel like he's an uneducated high school dropout that's watched a bunch of Law & Order on TV and is trying to be an actor in this courtroom? The government would ask that the court credit the testimony of Special Agent Still. Why, Miss Walters? But I've already shown that there is no substance in anything that Special Agent Steele has really said. He testified that he is one of the lead agents. He didn't say, he didn't mention who any of the other ones were on the subject of removal matter. That that is the indictment out of Knoxville, Tennessee. He also testified that he testified before the grand jury as to the entire matter and specifically this defendant's identity as a suspect after which the indictment was issued. Wow, I can't wait to pick his testimony apart uh, through the grand jury and see if there's any meat in it. Special Agent Steele testified that he reviewed videos of the defendant stating her name and also indicating her involvement in the matter that is the subject of the indictment. This has not been established yet. There are videos that apparently have the likeness of Heather Ann Tucci, but those videos have not been examined. There's no way that he can tell if, the, if it was some other person with a great makeup job and they, they dubbed over audio. They are assigning way too much meaning to what they have presented here. He reviewed photographs and other demographic information in relation to Heather Antucci Giraffe. He also testified that there was a separate civilian witness who identified this defendant as Heather Antucci Giraffe. Who is the civilian witness? What, what is that name? That was never mentioned. They were with Heather Antucci Giraffe on the date identified, on the date that she was arrested here in the District of Columbia pursuant to a call to Special Agent Steele by the U.S. Secret Service. Why, why did the Secret Service call FBI in Knoxville when they knew that they had a person in Washington, D.C. with an arrest warrant? We went over that in the Reason for Giglio video, my most important video thus far. I moved it to the top of the playlist that I have for all of these Heather Antucci observations and documentation so that when you click on that playlist, that's the first video. Like I say, if you're a law student, if you're a cop, retired judge, active judge, if you're an attorney and you're trying to become a judge, if you're a student trying to become a lawyer, student trying to become a law enforcement officer, any of this. You need to dive into this case, inspect it, look into it. If you don't get it, respect it, look again. I am shining light on observations that everybody can see about the dysfunctional and absolutely broken state that our court systems are in. Walter says, for his part, he did say that he was not present at the arrest, but received information from other law enforcement agents who advised that she was identified by a separate civilian witness as a defendant, at which time an arrest was effectuated. Who, what is this arrest was effectuated crap that's all throughout this document? I've never heard any cops or lawyers talk like that. This is a passive voice. You say, no, Matthew S Sarvis from the Department of U.S. Marshals affected the arrest of Heather Ann Tucci. Sarvis arrested her. You know, an arrest was effectuated 
is effectuated even a damn word. I've never heard that. I've heard effect. She sang, oh, well, for his part, for his testimony, he did admit he wasn't present at the arrest, but that unnamed law enforcement agents talked to other unnamed people who were there, and those other unnamed people told the unnamed law enforcement agents that this was Heather Ann Tucci. And so an arrest was effectuated. By who? This is garbage, guys. Absolute garbage. And Walters knows better. Finally, Your Honor, heard in court today, Special Agent Steele point out the defendant and specifically identify her as the person for whom an arrest warrant issued pursuant to the indictment sitting here in court today. What, the warrant that's signed by a deputy clerk? The first time that he ever sees her, she's in courtroom in the defendant's chair at the defense table in an orange jumpsuit. All he's seen is videos. Holy cow, there's no way that I would ever go into court having never physically seen a person in the flesh with my own eyes and feel comfortable that under oath I'm going to point a person out and identify them? It was hard enough when I had already seen them with my own eyes. People change over time. People get their hair cut. People shave their beards and stuff. Visual identification of a person, it's a hard thing to rely on. Wow, just write a traffic to somebody who's got an identical twin and go to court and have both of those people sitting at the, at the defendant's table. There's no way I could be sure that I was picking out the right one. And in fact, in that kind of situation where you go to court and, well, I, I, think, I think that's the right person, but I'm not 100% sure, I, I would watch that person all throughout the court. And, and whenever the name of the defendant who was on my ticket, whenever that name was spoken out into the courtroom, I would watch the person who I thought was that person. And if they stood up when they were called, if they admitted that that was their name, then when I was in court, when it was my turn to take the stand, and they said, do you see the defendant here today? I say, yes, I do. I'd point them out. Are you sure? Yes. How can you be sure? Well, this is the person, looks uh, just like the person that I wrote a ticket to, and I was watching this person throughout the proceedings that happened already today. And the five times that this name came out, well, that person stood up. So that's why I'm pretty confident about it. If you're aware of other information that rebuts that, I'm more than willing to hear it because I know I've made mistakes before, but I feel confident in this matter. That's how you say that. God. The, the fact that someone, any of us, could have gone into that courtroom and, and picked Heather Ann Tucci out. Any of us. Even if we hadn't seen her, even if we didn't know this case, there was only one person at the defense table in orange. The government would ask that the court credit other competent evidence that has been presented, most importantly the fingerprint analysis that was conducted by the FBI which concluded that this defendant is Heather Antucci Giraffe with a date of birth of July 30th, 1972, a social security number ending in 1682. You know, I, I have a feeling that they would read out the whole security number into the court record. And also, the government would note that those identifiers correspond with the name appearing on the indictment and the name and date of birth appearing on the warrant that is before your honor. And also, the name and date of birth appearing on the pretrial services agency report, which is not admitted, which was provided to the court by the parties at the initial appearance in this matter of July, on July 26, 2017. <laughs> 
And finally, the government would note that Ms. Heather Ann Tucci Giraffe has been in custody since July 26, 2017, since her arrest here in D.C. So there's no question that the person who was arrested on that date and the person who is sitting before the court today is, in fact, the same person. So the government would rest and submit to the court that we have met our burden of proving that the defendant is, in fact, the person named in the indictment and the warrant that is the subject of this removal matter. Thank you very much, Mr. Wal Ms. Walters, Mr. Bowes. Wow. All right. We're going to stop right. Uh, page 66. All right. Well, we're going to stop right there. We're a half hour into this. Uh, yeah, we can see that that what Miss Walters is doing is is saying, hey, every one of those things that the FBI Steele testified about, his testimony, all the documents he's saying that are supporting evidence that pretty much all of that I've showed how it's not. And she's she's asking that that the court rule that that all of that indicates that Heather Antucci is sitting there in the courtroom today and and that they've established the the true identity for her wow hey if you got any love light or links for me lunacy l-u-n-a-s-e-e -E, at protonmail.com lots of love guys peace out